The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. Ben, I was looking at our project list and I saw Yobo Ness on our list. Now I know what Ness is because clearly I'm a Nintendo fan, but I don't know what Yobo is. Is that like YOLO? Mm -hmm, no. Like you only bifurcate once. That has nothing to do with playing Nintendo. Oh, God, I hope it doesn't. <laughs> okay, they have these Nintendo clones. Um, they basically call them Nintendo on the chips. It's a little glop top on a circuit board and basically it clones a Nintendo system. Oh, okay. So Yobo is just a brand of little clone Nintendo consoles. Oh, so what are we going to do with it? Well, last year at MGC I found one of those in the junk pile. I bought it for like a dollar. Nice. Brought it back here to the shop and it turns out that it worked. So I was thinking we could hack it up and use the parts to try to make a really small Nintendo clone. I mean, basically, try to make a little portable Nintendo no larger than the cartridge. I mean, it'll be thicker than the cartridge, but keep the XY like that same size. Okay, so would it be an emulator or would it use actual original Nintendo It'll games? take the original cartridges. Yes, yeah. this sounds awesome. Yeah, which means it'll be bigger than it actually has to be because of the cartridge, but you know, mm -hmm. that's cool. So you could take that around to show like MDC and say, huh, I'd better see if this Flintstones Dino Peak works and stick it in and then be like, I will still not buy it because it's too much money. <laughs> so we've got all the parts, let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right, so I've drawn up this in Fusion 360. I've taken the files here. I've got the PCB mostly done. I did notice we have an issue when we do our laser paint, and that is sometimes it's hard to get the copper out from between traces. So I went into design rules check. Usually I use Osh Park, but I changed the um, spacing here from six mils up to 20 mil. And that way, when you do a rat's nest, it will give us a wider than normal gap between the trace and any copper floodplain. That allows the etchant to get in between the grooves and remove the copper. Because in the past, the spacing between traces is actually the, the hardest part about the, um, the, the etchant. Because if you think about it, the copper has a thickness. So if, you know, if there's not a very big gap, it's hard to get like your scrubbing sponge or the, you know, the stuff in there. But if there's a bigger gap, it can go into the groove. Otherwise, as you try to scrub away the copper, you know, you're just scrubbing you know, over the two layers. You can't get into the groove. So we make the grooves bigger. Yeah, so it's mostly done. I think I need to add a capacitor for the audio amplifier. Other than that, it should all be here. I have some random vias just to indicate where we need to do some ground jumps. Uh, only a couple of those. Uh, everything should be there. So I started doing a design, like a visual design in Illustrator. I took the file and I, you know, making like a, what would probably be a white laser cut front plate. Trying to keep it simple. I was trying some ideas where Perhaps we would have the, um, we kind of look like the top of the Nintendo where you've got the, the black stripe going across it. I was kind of thinking about doing that with the screen, but it was a bit much. Then I tried putting like a big black area around the controls, you know, like an original controller, but that also looked like a bit much. So I kind of simplified it to what I have here. I'm also, I'm pretty close with the front of the unit. I realized I couldn't put a dial in for the audio amplifier because the circuit board of the the Ness on a chip takes up so much space. That's why I went with the push button controls. Then underneath here, from a different project, I exported the Adafruit charge circuit. I'm thinking I'm gonna kind of put it right there, just behind the screen. So there should be enough room with that and the battery. Actually, I guess we can turn off the front and turn on the spacing and the battery and just kind of see. Oh, there's plenty of space, no problem. Yeah, so what I need to do before I can print the front of the case is create some surfaces here, which is, that's the power switch, and then here, that's the charge jack. It's going to create some openings there for the, you know, for the power plug and the switch. And then that should be pretty much everything I need for the front of the case. And I'm going to print it out of white PLA and then possibly give it a very light gray paint job. Because I don't have any light gray PLA. I didn't have any Nintendo gray engraving plastic laying around, believe it or not. So I went to the hardware store and I found the closest I could in paint. So then last night I painted this piece of white engraving plastic. So my plan is 
to laser it so it will match the Nintendo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in chunks. I mean, you know, we put uh, Krylon paint onto circuit boards all the time to make laser paint, but this is the first time I've ever tried to laser cut a piece of engraving plastic with paint on top of it. So I'm going to do it uh, one step at a time. I'm going to start with the letters that are supposed to be dark. Uh, usually you would just cut through the white layer of the engraving plastic to show the black below. I might need more power for this, so I'm probably going to do it in multiple steps. So let's see what happens. That uh, burned through both layers pretty well. I mean, if you think about it, the paint layer is probably actually you know weaker than the plastic layer. I think I'm going to hit it one more time at a lower power and then I will do the shaded areas. And those will probably be a little trickier because it's actually going to be using a dot pattern to create a shaded effect rather than just you know cutting all the way through to the black. So I'm going to do one more layer of this and then we'll move on to the trickier thing, which is the shaded stuff. I was able to clean up the smudge marks off the paint pretty well. From our laser paint experience, we know that uh, isopropyl alcohol will not affect acrylic hardware store paint. All right, so here's my plan. I still need to print the uh, plus and minus buttons. I was trying to use this ancient uh, white ABS I had laying around. However, it kind of printed like, looked like skin instead of white ABS. So I, I did these all out of ABS actually, just to be different but I'll have to print these out of uh, PLA because I don't have any white ABS left that looks good. So, you know, obviously there's a black line around the um, engraving plastic. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this together and then I'm going to mask it off with some tape and I'm going to repaint the sides because I think the uh, walls need another hit anyway, which should hopefully cover this black line. Or it could ruin everything. I guess we'll find out. Okay, here's the back of the unit. Here is our interface plate. I gotta gingerly handle this. I guess it's the only way I can handle things because I am a ginger. I'm a ginger. All right, so that's gonna fit flush in the back of the plate there, basically to cover up the insides. And we'll put some screws in there. And then this goes over here. Yeah, that's pretty much what it's gonna look like. So most of the thickness is derived from the height of the nest on a chip board rather than the components. Cool. So what I'm going to let this do, I'm going to let this, uh, let this dry some more and then we'll uh, start putting parts in it. Felix is working on the PCB behind me, but I can get started with the screen and some of the other control stuff in the meantime. Then what I need to figure out is basically the best way to uh, assemble it. Like, is this going to be its own thing? Does this circuit board stay here? How long will the cables have to be? Although I think we have a pretty good amount of space here to uh, loop cables, so it probably won't be that big of a deal. Paint from Felix, the master of laser painting. If you need something laser painted fast, call Felix Laser Painting. There's something I need to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to put the ICs on the top here. Some of these pins uh, are connected on the bottom. So since this is not a double-sided board, we have to make sure that we have connectivity like here, 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 and here, because we'll have to solder these on the outside and we won't necessarily know if they're connected or not. I guess the best way to do it is just to go for it. I'm gonna grab the chip. The 
previous laser paint board, so we re-laser painted it. And I told Felix to be extra aggressive when removing the copper. Everything appears to be working now. This board is also less of a mess than the previous one was. Big difference, I put the through-hole integrated components on the bottom because since it's a single-sided board, now the single side that has copper, that's the solder side for the pads. So I should have done that originally. It actually made everything a lot easier. Let's just go over all the parts. So we have an Adafruit LiPo charger with boost control. We've got our NTSC LCD driver board here. We have a boost circuit for the Nintendo signal, which is just a transistor. And then we have our laser paint board, which has an audio amplifier, 8-bit shift register, and a digital potentiometer for button volume control. And of course we have our Nintendo on a chip board here. I've sawn off a good deal of it and branched it over. So I'm gonna bolt the controls down over the buttons. See how I lift off the table when I do this? That's because the buttons have a certain amount of height. So if I push down, if I just push down flat on this, that won't work because the buttons are there. But when I have it lifted like this, the buttons are not being pressed and therefore I know that I am screwing the board into place as flat as possible. Asterisk, hopefully it's flat enough. It should be, I guess we'll see. Now I have to plunge these screws in to hold the cartridge slot thing in place. It's kind of dark and gloomy down there. Maybe if I screw this together first, that would actually keep it in place better for me. Contra. Oh, I just realized this game is 30 years old. Oh my Lord, that is insane. Oh no, it got me with its flaming red balls. I'm a speed runner, baby, die. You know what speed runners do is they, they just avoid everything basically. Oh look, an extra spread in case I had like a teammate, but I don't. Rapid shot? I never really understood. I think it allows you to shoot a little faster. Why are these aliens jumping everywhere? Remember all those scenes in Predator where the alien jumped? Me neither. I did put a pull down resistor on the audio input to basically limit the total volume. That will just save a little bit of power. It's still plenty loud enough, I think. Well, Karen, what do you think of the Yobo Nest clone that I built? This thing is super cool. Oh yeah! I want to take it to MGC and test a bunch of useless <laughs> original Nintendo games that I'll never buy. Contra is not useless. This is like well, a $50 no. game now. What the heck? So what do you think? There's a convenient slot in the back so everyone knows what game you're playing. Yeah, look at that viewing window yeah. of the original cartridge. You can see the wonderfully ripped off artwork from Predator and Rambo. <laughs> Good job, Konami. Also, you should take a look at the original Metal Gear box, which rips off Terminator. So this game has a good size screen. Mm -hmm. It's got good speakers with volume control. Yeah. You can use an original cartridge and you've got the window on there. Yep. And I wonder what other features people would want. What else do we got? You got USB char charging, charge jack, USB yep. charging. Nice little uh, power switch second here. Second player port, which there probably mm. wouldn't have been room for, but I mean, we could probably figure it out. Someone probably would want a port for an external controller so you could like. Yeah. Set it over there and be like, boop, 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 Oh, boop. so it could be like the Nintendo Switch. That's all we have for today. What do you think about this Nintendo on a chip clone Nintendo Entertainment System Portable? What other features would you want on your NES, NES, original Nintendo handheld portable? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. I think it's cartridge out. Can you? That's what the little like gripper part is for, right? Yeah, right. If you're like a, if you're like, if you, if you are Arnold Claus. Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Oh, I will not eat another fish. I'm a vegan. When you're real drunk and you gotta go someplace to eat, go to Waffle House, but make sure you Uber there. What a wonderful sloth. I see sloth shaking claws. Saying how do you do? They're really saying I'll eat the bugs off of you. My heart's clogged with love, but I don't care. Well, this sounds like a no number one hit song. Max, have you ever been to a Waffle House?
Uh-huh. I have. What were your thoughts? It's okay. Karen, a lot of people on Twitter are talking about this Oregon Trail handheld game. Some people have suggested that we buy it, take it apart, and try to figure out what's inside. The graphics don't match the Apple II. The Apple II had pretty terrible graphics. Wow, there's not much in this. Hey, we could rebuild this into Oregon Trail, portable or super portable. We could have a million pounds of food. It would be like your average Texas buffet.